about you, but I was the first person I knew to have IoT devices running various functions in and around my house. Smart thermostat? Check. Smart light bulb? Check. Smart chicken coop door? Check. I'm not even sure I know how many first-generation smart home devices I have owned over the years. But with all of these connected devices, is my house really smart? Yeah, not so much. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Interoperability in our growing Internet of Things ecosystem has been a challenge for years. But the new matter standard is looking to change all of that. It could not only make our homes smarter, but our design lives easier as well. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Sujatha Naidig from NXP and I examine how matter will revolutionize IoT by increasing interoperability, simplifying development, and providing a comprehensive approach to security and privacy. We also discuss what the roadmap for Matter looks like and how NXP's Matter reference platforms can help you get started with your next IoT design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from NXP. Hi, Sujata. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, we are talking about Matter today which is one of my all-time favorite topics here on Chalk Talk. So before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us? What kind of challenges is Matter looking to help solve? Yes, well, I'm glad you're excited about it because I'm super excited about it as well. And, you know, to help set the stage, I think everybody is aware the smart home has really evolved over the last couple of decades. And today in a typical home, you'd probably see over 100 IoT devices in that home because the number of light bulbs, light switches, security cameras, it all adds up. The challenge that we have is all those devices connect to each other, but they're using different protocols. There's probably over 30 protocols between wired and wireless options on how those devices connect. And what that means is for consumers, things don't always work the way they're supposed to. They don't connect to each other, and that leads to frustration and lack of confidence from consumers. That absolutely makes sense. So what exactly is Matter? So Matter is a unifying protocol, and it is designed to securely and robustly connect smart devices to each other that are across different brands, as well as across smart home ecosystems. So think about that today in your home. Some people like using Amazon Echo. Some people are with the Google Home. Some people prefer Apple's devices. And with Matter, these devices will all speak to each other in the same language across the different platforms. So in the end, what Matter is bringing together is to drive interoperability and compatibility across ecosystems and for consumers. And for companies that are developing smart home products, it's really about simplifying that development process of bringing smart devices or IoT devices to market. And we all have seen how security and privacy are top of mind on consumers' minds, as well as manufacturers, because the threats that are available really can lead to very dire consequences. So Matter is designed with security and privacy as key elements to protect devices. And in the end, what I see is that we will have a truly smarter home. You know, I think some people, we have smart devices in our home, but they're not truly working together to create an innovative and intuitive and easy to use home. So that is what Matter brings to consumers and to the industry. And what's really unique about Matter too, is that when this work was started, it was already backed and supported by major brands across all regions of the world representing different aspects from silicon companies like NXP to smart home platform providers like Apple, Amazon, Google, SmartThings, to device manufacturers like Residio, Somfy, to just name a few. Fantastic. Now, what is the connection between Matter and those IoT devices you mentioned earlier? You see, Matter is targeting a set number of device types for its initial launch. So those are shown on this slide at the bottom. 
your typical lighting products like light bulbs and switches, dimmers, smart plugs, window shades, HVAC controls, smart TVs or displays, access control like smart door locks, safety and security sensors, motion contact sensors, bridges and controllers, which I'll get to later in the presentation on what those actually mean. So how do you develop those products and implement Matter? Matter is a connectivity protocol. So with wireless connectivity protocols, there's layers to implementing that protocol. Matter sits at the top of that stack. So Matter is what interfaces from the stack to the end application, or what I like to call the application layer. And Matter is based on IP or internet protocol. So it's the same technology that runs the web being used to run smart, simple, or smaller devices. So Matter sits on top of IP or IPv6, and then how devices connect to each other is at the bottom of that. And Matter, because it's IP, can leverage other IP technologies. To start with, Matter will use Wi-Fi and Thread and Ethernet as a wired option as ways for devices to connect to each other. That makes sense. Now, a big challenge in the realm of IoT is how complicated development can be. So how does Matter address these issues? Yes. And I think as a silicon company, we have firsthand experience at seeing that and the steps that companies have to take, developers have to take to build a smart product and guarantee that it works, not just when they deploy it, but that it also continues to operate in its environment for years to come. So with Matter, there's several aspects to how Matter is simplifying development. First of all, Matter allows developers to focus on their own products because matter, think of matter and how devices communicate to each other and connect as the plumbing. So since matter is taking care of how to implement all that in a standard way, product manufacturers and developers can really focus on their innovation. And then also because matter is backed by and supported by all the major ecosystem providers and their respective voice assistants, matter provides a simple way to integrate into those voice assistants and allows them to create one design to support all the ecosystems. Today, companies have to decide which ecosystems they want to support and either build multiple SKUs or pick just one or a smaller number of platforms to support. And the last thing about how Matter really simplifies development is because Matter is IP, it is a local network and devices communicate to each other directly without requiring dedicated proprietary hubs that are doing the translation. So Matter provides all those capabilities and it also gives developers some flexibility so they can choose the appropriate way to connect devices to each other for their use case. So Wi-Fi, of course, is well known and ubiquitous and available broadly but really designed for high bandwidth data. So streaming audio or video, those types of products will want to use Matter with Wi-Fi. Thread is a low power mesh technology that provides very low power translating to years of battery life with low bandwidth data. So that's an option to use for devices like sensors or other battery operated devices. And then also Ethernet as a wired solution is supported with Matter. And Matter also identifies this various aspects of the life cycle of an IoT device from how to onboard devices onto a network and update them once they're deployed in people's homes. So security is also a huge issue with IoT, right? How can Matter help me in terms of privacy and security? Exactly. I mean, I think everybody has heard and seen stories in the media about breaches of security and consumers are very concerned and want to have control over their data and protect that data. So Matter builds security into the protocol from the ground up. It's not an optional feature that you can enable within Matter. It is part of Matter. It covers many aspects and being comprehensive and it uses proven standard crypto algorithms. So from a developer perspective, it's taking advantage of what's already available in the industry and also targets being able to implement and use security without impacting the ease of use for consumers and being able to be resilient and be updated. In the way I would summarize what Matter does from a security and privacy aspect is that 
Matter devices are authenticated before they are allowed to join the Matter network. So a device, when it joins, has to prove that it is who it says it is, like light bulb from vendor Bulby. And then it also validates to see that it has Matter certification. So before a device can even join the network, it has to be authenticated. And then once on a network, the communications are done in an encrypted manner. So Sujata, can we also talk a bit about the communication aspect of Matter? How does it help our devices work together? Yes, so Matter devices don't operate on their own. They're designed to operate with other devices in a broader network and pull together all the various aspects. So this diagram shows you what a typical network topology would look like in a smart home, where you have a variety of different types of smart home devices and how they connect to each other. And we talked briefly about Wi-Fi versus Thread. So some of these devices will be based on Wi-Fi and some will be on Thread, but then Matter is the common language that brings them all together. And when you look at a Matter network, the different components, you will have end devices that are battery operated. And that's why you see on this device diagram that they are using the Thread technology to be able to provide that extended battery life and also provide that mesh technology so the devices can communicate to each other directly through the mesh and extend the reach that they have. So if your light bulb is down in the basement and you want to control it from the main floor, that range will be there because of the mesh network. Wi-Fi, I think everybody is familiar with Wi-Fi. You have an access point home router in your house somewhere and Wi-Fi devices connect to the cloud through that access point. Similar to that, with Thread, there's also a way to bridge from the Thread network to other IP networks like the internet, and that's called a Thread border router. So a border router, though, unlike Wi-Fi access points, is not a dedicated device type. It can be built into a number of device types as long as they are always powered. So smart speakers, even a Wi-Fi access point could build in the Thread border router functionality. And doing all this, these devices are connected to each other then in a local network. And that's a really important part too about Matter because they're just communicating directly to each other instead of going through the cloud. So there, it's more reliable and faster response times. If your internet goes down, which happens often for people, it won't disrupt your smart home network. That's fantastic. So let's talk about NXP and Matter. Yes, so NXP has been involved in IoT for quite a long time and driving a lot of the standards that you see in IoT as well as products. And when I think about what we bring to the table when we talk about Matter as NXP, we are able to bring a complete solution to our customers, the product developers and product manufacturers. We have all the various components. So we're not only a connectivity company, we also have compute product portfolios with microcontrollers and Linux processors. We have security capabilities with secure discrete elements or embedded security. And we have connectivity covering a range of connectivity types from Thread to Zigbee to Wi-Fi and other complementary technologies. So we're able to provide that broad portfolio and integrate the hardware and software components to build a solution. And then being able to do that, we can be the trusted development partner for our customers because we don't only bring silicon to the table. We also do the software integration and validation. We provide development tools and services to help customers so that they can take their ideas to production in a faster time frame. As I said, we've been involved in developing IoT standards for many, many years. And in many of these areas, we were founding members of developing those technologies like Thread and Zigbee and now Matter. So we have that expertise of what it takes to build these standards. And we also, because we have a large footprint in the industry, we have expertise and experience from working with our customers across multiple markets and different regions. And we can bring that knowledge and understanding into the standard development process. And all of that really helps us provide our customers with the way to focus on their innovation. And to complement that, we also invest in other technologies beyond just the connectivity for IoT. So we have IoT technologies around AI and ML, voice and facial recognition, smart access, localization. So we're able to help our customers really drive innovation in their products. 
And we partner with all the major platform providers as well. So our matter solutions are being validated and tested with those different platforms from Google, Amazon, Apple, Samsung Smart Things. Great. So can you explain a bit about the different solutions we have in terms of gateway, hub, edge node, and end node? How does it all fit together? So here, this is a diagram and it's a complex table here, but this goes to show that building smart IoT networks is complex when you look at it. And I showed on that previous slide about the diagram and how you create a network. You can see that there's a range of different device types, starting with those end devices that we call sleepy devices because they're battery operated. So most of the time they're going to be in a low power mode, not doing anything, wake up every now and then to take care of a task. Then you have edge nodes. Those are devices in the network that are powered and actually responsible for routing traffic through the network from one device to another. And then you've got the gateways at the top of that, which are the ones that bridge from the local network to other networks like the internet. And so they're usually doing more network management and sometimes have more rich user interfaces. So for these different device categories, then on the right, you see the types of devices that fall into these categories. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory about the battery-operated ones are, like light bulbs are not battery-operated, but they are very power-sensitive. Your sensors, contact motion sensors are battery-operated. And so to meet the different requirements for these different categories, they have different ways of implementing their solution overall and the architecture that's implemented. And that all depends on what kind of compute performance they need and what connectivity requirements they have. And so you can see that there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all solution for Matter because you have a range of device types that have a range of requirements. Absolutely. So what kind of reference platforms does NXP offer in terms of Matter? So when we were building our approach to how to bring Matter reference platforms to market, we knew that Matter was moving quickly with the goal of getting into the market as soon as possible to start enabling product manufacturers to build Matter products. And so we decided we were going to invest our efforts on the enablement and the software of that and use silicon that we already have in production today. We also wanted to provide our customers with the range of options to support these different types of devices. So that means the architecture of their platform and the type of connectivity they want to support, as well as what level of security beyond matter do they want to implement in their product. And again, we wanted to make sure that it was based off of components that we have available in production today. So with that in mind, we built three categories for our reference platforms. The first one is a host list or standalone architecture, really designed to support those end nodes, the sensors and actuators. And within that category, we have two reference platform options, one that's for Thread and one that's for Wi-Fi. The next category is about a hosted platform, but with an MCU host, so if an RTOS-based host that can be used to support the application because it has higher performance requirements, and that's based on our RT1060. And then the third category is an MPU or Linux hosted solution that uses one of our i.mx processors, the 8M Mini. And on both of these hosted platforms, we add the connectivity to the compute with different options, K32W for thread and a couple of different options for Wi-Fi. So this gives you a snapshot of the four different reference platforms that we're creating to enable our customers to build Matter devices. That makes sense. Now, can we start with that host list or standalone platform? Absolutely. So like I said before, this host list architecture, we are providing two options, one for customers that are developing thread-based products, so using Matter with Thread. Think again about very power-sensitive devices that have to last for years, have years of battery life, small form factor, all of that. And then we also have our Wi-Fi based on the MW320. So going back to that complicated table and matrix of different device types, you can see that what I'm leaving on the table here is all of those lower end end nodes or lower end edge nodes that don't have high processing requirements. Sure. So can we get into the details of this kind of architecture a bit more? Yeah. So standalone or hostless architecture means that you're implementing everything that's needed for the device in a single silicon component. In this case, we call it a wireless MCU. So the customer application, let's say you're building a smart plug 
and you want to have some customized features on that smart plug, that customer application would reside on the same MCU that the wireless software resides on. So this MCU has a radio in it, whether it's a thread radio or a Wi-Fi radio, plus a core that allows the customer to run the wireless software stacks and their own application. It provides a completely integrated solution, really providing low power consumption, a smaller footprint size factor, lower cost, and a simpler hardware design. There's more to building a product than the hardware. So from a software perspective, our software enablement provides all of the capabilities to include drivers for all of the key hardware features on the device. And then we also, from a software perspective, add the enablement for the connectivity. So our Matter open source SDK is part of what we deliver, along with an open thread network stack and the enablement for multi-protocol use. So with the Matter device, Bluetooth is used or Bluetooth low energy is used to add devices to a network. So they communicate over BLE to add the device to the network. So in this case, you have a completely integrated solution to support Matter with Thread, Bluetooth low energy, and all of the capabilities that are needed for the application. So what about the software integration part of this standalone architecture? What does that look like? Yes. So hardware, of course, is just one component and aspect, but how to use that hardware means you need to get the software and integrate it with the hardware. So what we do is we provide a complete enablement package that includes the application, SDK, and stacks. And this diagram, what you see is at the bottom, these are the different hardware features of the K32W MCU that we're enabling with our software drivers. On top of that, we also implement the connectivity capabilities. That means we're implementing the Matter SDK, which is an open source project. We also implement OpenThread, which is an open source implementation of Thread. And we have the Bluetooth low energy host stack and controller. We also do the enablement for multi-protocol radio. Since this device supports BLE and Thread, we enable to make sure that both of those can be used at the same time. An example would be that the Bluetooth low energy is used as how to commission or add a device to a matter network. Once the device is on the matter network, it will communicate with the other devices through thread. So that enablement of how to use those together is done within our software package. And this is what is provided along with the hardware for our customers to create their end product. I talked about the Matter SDK and that it is an open source project. So today, if you look in the Matter open source GitHub repository, you will see our K32W0 standalone wireless MCU platform in the build environment there and can download and use that with the hardware development kit. Okay, so can we also look at the two hosted solutions you mentioned earlier? Yes. So for the hosted solutions, again, we have two categories within hosted, an MCU host and a Linux or MPU hosted solution. And going back again to that matrix of the different device types that matter manufacturers are going to build, when I look at a hosted application, what I think of that would drive the need for a hosted application is features that have more compute capability requirements. So that would be things like a graphical user interface or a rich user interface, AI, ML, any kind of voice or facial recognition, maybe doing video streaming, biometrics. Those are all different types of capabilities and features that is not part of matter, but that is part of what the overall product needs to do. And that drives higher compute requirements. That makes sense. Now, what does this kind of architecture look like? In this hosted architecture, It's called hosted because the wireless connectivity stacks and drivers, instead of those residing on the wireless MCU, they will be implemented into the host controller, whether it's an MCU or an MPU. So your wireless hardware has the basic firmware implemented on that and then uses an interface to communicate to the host processor. On that host processor, you'll have the wireless drivers, the wireless stacks, such as thread stack. And then on top of that, you would have the customer application. And what this does is it allows the application to take advantage of the features of the host and allows the wireless implementation to be integrated with that to provide a more optimized solution. So what about the software story here? 
as you can imagine, it's a little bit more complicated or more complex because there's multiple components involved in the hosted architecture. So on this graphic you see here, there's several components highlighted, the iDotMX RT MCU, as well as the K32W0 wireless MCU supporting thread, and the IW416, which is a Wi-Fi device. There's also an optional component called the SC05X, which is an external discrete element for implementing the security crypto that can be used by Matter. That's optional because some of that capability can also be implemented in software. So what this is showing you is that the software integration to support all of these hardware components is done so that the main processor can communicate to the different components using various interfaces and that all the software components reside on the main processor to interact with the components on the discrete devices. And then also looking at how do those wireless devices work with each other. So that's the MCU hosted architecture or RSTOS hosted. It's the same for an, a Linux hosted architecture. In this case, it's a different component for the Wi-Fi with the W8987. The K32W0 is the same component for Thread as is the secure element as an optional capability. The i.mx processor hosts all the various components, just like on the hosted MCU architecture. So the matter, thread, Bluetooth is all done within that environment. What's different here is it's done within Linux instead of RTOS. And then also looking at these different wireless components and how to put together the wireless coexistence with those two devices. And then from a software enablement perspective and how do you start doing development with the software, again, on the Matter GitHub public repository, there is a build example with NXP that's called the NXP Linux example. And that comes with the documentation on how to recreate that build. So here at EE Journal, we've been talking about Matter for a little while, but it has come a long way in a relatively short amount of time, right? Very much so. Standards typically take many more years to develop. And a lot of that is in the past. Standards would be developed, the spec would be developed, and then there was a certification program. And then the software implementation was unique because there were more proprietary implementations. Matter took an open source approach to do them all in parallel. So Matter is developing the spec, the certification program, as well as the SDK all in parallel. Over the last year and a half, there have been multiple test events, multiple working group and tiger teams to create the spec and companies working towards a common SDK implementation for Matter. So that has what's been happening over the last year and a half. And now Matter is targeted to launch this fall. So it will cross the finish line and have Matter supporting device types with a certification program and an SDK available. And along that matter development timeline, NXP has been involved from the beginning with these various reference platforms that I've shared and developing the software integration for those, as well as contributing to the matter development efforts. And we will continue to expand the reference platform capabilities. We have newer devices that will be coming out in the coming months and years for microcontrollers, as well as our Linux processors and our connectivity components. Fantastic. Well, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Absolutely, sure. So with NXP, we have invested in Matter because we believe that Matter truly is going to unify the industry and really address and solve that interoperability and compatibility challenge that exists today. And we want to be able to bring the different expertise we have, combine that together for Matter. That's our compute platforms, connect and secure with a goal of really providing a simplified developer experience, along with the flexibility and scalability for our customers to build innovative products that can last for years in the market and really enable them to focus on innovation at the product level. You can get started and learn more about all of the capabilities and solutions that we're providing for Matter at nxp.com slash matter. And also, as I showed in the Matter public GitHub repo, you can see and download and start prototyping and evaluating the different software enablement packages we have, depending on what your use case is. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun to talk to you about. 
And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from NXP. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.